Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to be installing a HXC USB floppy drive emulator in the Insonic TS-12. All right, we're going to be installing this GoTech HXC USB floppy emulator. It's going to go in place of this factory three and a half floppy. You can put disk images on a USB stick, put it in this, and this is switched through the disk. So you can have hundreds of Insonic floppies in this. So let's get to putting this in. The first thing we want to do is flip this thing over and take the panel off of it. You want to take the screws out that are in the back here and all of the screws except for the ones in this groove right here. These hold the front part of the key bed on. So leave those in and of course you don't want to try to take the rubber boots off. Some of these screws are fine thread. Some of them are coarse thread plastic screws. So you want to pay attention to the order you take them out. Pull back a little bit like this so to clear these jacks. You should be able to pick up on it and it come off. All right, so this is what it looks like underneath. Right here is the factory floppy drive that we're gonna take out. This drive comes with hardware and a few jumper pins. I actually got this drive from an Insonic tech so he already configured it with the correct jumper positions. So I should be able to just plug this thing in and go. I'm gonna keep the original and Sonic screws in that drive and then use the hardware that came with this. We have to unplug this ribbon cable. This is the power cable and these four Phillips head screws and we should be good to take this drive out. Yeah. Ooh, this is a Sony. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this new drive in while it's out, because it's easier. Yes, sir. I show sure enough now. It sure is. And you can see the drive is upside down, of course, because the keyboard's upside down. These are new holes. They're not threaded yet. Hold this drive off to the side. Get these holes threaded. Now, if you would have waited till you put the drive in there to try to do this, you'd be fighting this thing for hours. Now we pull these screws back out. Put the drive in. Yes. Uh, I gotta start these screws with this thing. These holes are slotted and the drives are pushed all the way forward. At least the other one was. I have this in the exact same spot as the other one. So let's see what it looks like out the front. It looks pretty good, but it'd be nice if it was pushed in some more on this side. Yeah, that looks good right there. Check the front again. <clears throat> looks good. The drive is done. <laughs> All right, while we're here, let's just go over all of the connections, make sure everything's okay. Let's put this thing back together. Let's turn this thing on. The disk images that this thing reads is called HFE files, okay? So this drive will only read HFE disk images. Here's the thumb drive. 
Let's open this thing up. When I got this thing, all it had was these TS blank images. I got a couple of ASR discs on here. I actually got my hands on five of the original factory TS discs. So these are TS 10 and 12 patches and sequences and stuff. Pretty cool. Let's start from the beginning. Let's close out our floppy drive. This is my TS 12 folder. Say we want to load this factory TS disk. Double click it, unzip it, bring this file out. This is an EDT file, which that is the Ensonic TS disk image format. In order for these Ensonic disk images to be read by the keyboard's HXC drive that we just installed, you have to convert these images to the HFE format. You have to go on the internet. This says hxc2001.free.fr. You can Google search this and come to the site. These are all of the machines that this software supports. Man, you got all kinds of stuff, man. You got Ataris, oh man, just all kinds of computers. TRS-80 is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, Apple computers, blah, blah, Korg, all kinds of keyboards, and Sonic SD-1, Kai, Alesis, blah, blah, blah. I think the first thing you're gonna come to is drivers or firmware. So let's just keep paging down right here software and tools you need this hxc floppy emulator software you're going to download that and it's pretty simple to install because all that's in there is basically the app okay so on a mac all you do is drag and drop the app into your applications folder here it is hxc floppy emulator software click that this is what it looks like you can load a floppy image you can load a raw image, batch converter for multiple files, disk browser to browse what's on the disk, export to export the disk out of this thing. These are drive settings, which I'm not gonna use because I don't have the drive connected to this computer. It's on the Insonic keyboard. Floppy disk dump, track analyzer. This actually analyzes the sectors on the disk. It's pretty cool. Click load. Here's our Insonic disk image. Double clicked it. The software loaded it up. It's saying it's 80 tracks, two sides. We're we're going to export this in Sonic image as a HFE file. This HFE is the format that the USB drive reads and the only one it will acknowledge. Click save, go on the desktop. That just made us a USB drive readable that the TS-12 will now read. Here's your HXE thumb drive that we still have plugged in. You would just take this, this is your HFE disk image and drag it up in there. I'm not going to do that because I already have the file up here. Once you get your HFE disk images in here, simply Simply eject that thumb drive, pull it out. Over here's the plug-in. Flashing means it's ready. Solid means it's reading. There's an up and down button right here that changes through the disc. Let's go to a different one. I think this was the one on ASR. This is an ASR disc. Now, when you load samples onto one of these, this thing has two sample banks on it because I upgraded it to the eight megabyte RAM. It's maxed out. This is user, this is internal. ROM, ROM, ROM. S8 is where you can load samples. Right now it's empty. S9 is an extra bank. These can all be samples across here. So just like if there was a floppy in there, go to storage disk. Storage option is disk right now. And we want to load a sample. Whatever's underlined is what you're selected. So these are all of the samples on the ASR disk. Let's go to demo loop one. It tells you the size. Click yes. We want to load that. This is how much free kilobytes memory I have. It's asking me select a location for the sound. Let's put it in zero. It's loading the demo loop one. It's about the speed of a real floppy. Some of these things have a floppy drive emulator sound to them where they actually go. Ee, 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 ee. <laughs> Right now we loaded demo loop one right here. Let's go to the next sound, moving this up slightly. Demo loop two, we want to load this. Yes, this is our free memory, which is plenty. Asking where do I want to put this sample? This is already taken because we just loaded loop one. Gonna put the loop two sample right here is where it's going. <laughs> so we got that loaded. We got two sounds loaded. Move this up. This sound here is called Piatti or whatever. I don't know what the hell it is, but yes, let's load it up. Put it on the next empty slot. All right, next sound. Power X. Why? I don't mind if I do. Power X. Put this baby right here. Loading up Power X. Yeah. All right, we got that one. Let's see if we got any more sounds. Perhaps. 
It's interesting. I wonder what these are. Yes, we'll load that and we'll put it right here, senor. Loading. In, in, in. Any more sounds? Ooh, real big hit. Let's load that one. Yes. We still have 5,700 KB or whatever the hell. I think that's kilobytes. Let's put this big hit right here. The next empty one. Loading it up. Mm -mm. That's all for this disc. Sounds were in the sample bank S8. When you're in sample bank, there's only one sound per button. So demo loop is right here on zero. Demo loop two, as you can see this here. So zero demo loop one, that's highlighted. <laughs> This TS is going to be coming after you ASR boys today. All right, let's see what we can do with this stuff here. We're going to go to the sequencer. This should be an empty sequence. If you have a sequence taken, press blank and start a new sequence. Let me just show you that anyways. We want to put it in blank, create new sequence. We're just going to call it sequence two. You can rename it if you want. Yes. Yes, time signature 44 is okay. Yes. Now, we just created that sequence. We're in sequence two. Here are the tracks. It already put me drum loop one. Now, we are going to make us a song with ASR sounds only from this disc. So we need to figure out what tempo that is. All right, all right, all right. Let's do it up. All right, hold record, press play. It's going to give you a count in. Two, three, four. Four bars, keep, yes. Going back to our sequencer tracks, select track two, which was undefined, we added track two. Replace that sound, it put drum loop there again. We wanna put drum loop two there. Yeah. All right, back to our sequencer tracks. It's track three is what we're on now. We want to replace that sound. We were on drum loop two. Let's see what this is. Let's do it. Moving along, moving along. Here's our tracks. Select the next one, track four. We want to change that sound. The next sound is Power X. Next track, change the sound, perhaps. Perhaps you would, perhaps you, perhaps, perhaps you would like some music. Perhaps you would like some. Hmm, perhaps I would. We gotta turn this guitar down. Next track, change the sound. Real big hit, yeah, whoa. All right, man. So this is our song with the uh, ASR samples. All right, keep that. Go over here to the volumes. Perhaps you would like some, perhaps you would like some, perhaps you would like some music. 
show you guys one more thing. Here are the factory patches in the user banks. They're okay. Well, the presets aren't too bad. So this is factory stuff here. If you do a factory reset, this is what loads up. But now check this out. Those actual TS discs that I have, that I put on here, my favorite one is the first one. See, this is just like putting new floppies in each disc I flip to. There's four, three, two, one. These are all pretty good. Solid means it's reading, and then when it starts flashing, it's standing by. So we have the TSD-1001 in the drive now. Stores disc, we're gonna go disc, not sysx. We're gonna load. Now this type of disc has programs and sequences and stuff in it. This is not a sample disc. Now what I do is I go through real slow and this stuff changes right here. I look at the size of the information. If it's zero bytes, then it's pretty much a blank entry. Press up on this. Here's the first thing we come to, which is 60 programs. Size, 73. Yes, we wanna load this and it's loading them. It's putting those sounds wherever they were meant to be in the user banks. Keep moving the slider up. Oh, there's our next thing 120 programs yes we want to put that in there now it's loading these up command completed zero don't want that here's 120 presets yes loaded those up 30 sequences and songs yeah let's put them babies on there why not uh, 172 this is 60 more songs why yes throw them on there too that's everything from the disc now when we come back out here and go to sounds these are all different sounds that loaded up <laughs> These are more impressive sounding. This isn't that Genesis sound, it's a different one, the one called Game Boy. <laughs> All right, man, let me show you some of the sequences. Well, we have some 80s over here. What's this 80s? Oh, 
Oh, dude. I'm scared. Dude, this is my stuff right here, man. Thank you for checking out my video of this TS upgrade. If you'd like to know how to do some other upgrades to this board, I shot these in a series of three and you should be able to find them on my channel. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next video.